So when people like Nosek are still against minimum transparency levels, they're effectively saying that they're okay with black box science, which allows scientific doping and other shenanigans. The good news is that all of this pushback and feedback has really sharpened my thinking and, and has helped me boil it down even simpler. As a scientist, not meeting a minimum transparency level is self-defeating and unethical. It's self-defeating because minimum transparency is just basic scientific hygiene to minimize the chance of fooling yourself and others by increasing the chance of detecting errors if errors were made. If you're not meeting that or enforcing that, uh, it's just self-defeating. But it's also unethical because without minimum transparency, you're not accountable to mistakes that you do make and possible fraud or other types of academic cheating also known as scientific doping, where you just cherry pick the analyses, cherry pick the evidence, the studies uh, to give a distorted picture of reality. And accountability has never been more important given, as we reviewed many times now, the unprecedented high stakes and hyper competition of academia, which allows and even encourages scientific doping. I mean, it's like the Tour de France. Uh, if you're not doping, you basically can't be competing at the top. And even independent of all of that, it's already in the research integrity codes of conduct. And so accountability is the main reason why we transparency is a core ethical principle that we all must abide by. It's kind of an unwritten code, but it should be more explicit, kind of like the Hippocratic Oath in medicine. It should be part of, well, I think it is now more part of training, grad school than in our days. And so we can visually demonstrate this with a new 3D diagram I just created. So the paper itself, when you print it or view it on PDF, the paper is just actually a summary of what was done and what was found. So it's kind of an advertisement for the research. But it's actually not the contribution, which is the evidence itself. You're making claims based on the evidence. The evidence is the data and the methodological details regarding how that data was generated. That's really what counts. The paper itself is just a summary. So you can see this, this is the stuff behind the paper in the cube. And so with opaqueness, you get a dark cube. You don't know how the sausage was made. And so minimum transparency, uh, which is what we're proposing, just includes public data and basic reporting, conflicts of interest, funding sources. And we think in 2010, barring val valid exemptions, sometimes you, you have ethical issues and or other intellectual property, but you need that minimum transparency because it's that light that allows you to see how the sausage was made and therefore allowing you the ability to scrutinize actual details. And if a paper withstands the scrutiny, then it's credible and trustworthy, right? But if you don't have the details, you can't even scrutinize it. So it's you can't even determine whether it's trustworthy or not, right? And then, of course, you can have higher standards that have more detailed reporting guidelines on the methods. Uh, so we're calling that the welcome standard. So it's, it's a higher transparency standard. And then finally, the equator standard, which goes even further now requiring pre-registered design uh, and hyper analyses, which is now standard in medicine, right? Though in medicine, they still don't have mandatory public data which is a real shame. And as we've seen, the track record for COVID papers is not great. There's already like 35 retractions since February of COVID research. So again, if we had mandatory data, we could detect fraud and other problems way faster. So when people like NOSEC are still against minimum transparency level, they're effectively saying that they're okay with black box science, which allows scientific doping, and other shenanigans, which also means that researchers are not accountable. I mean, there's there's really no other way to look at it. Light is the best disinfectant. Transparency is the light that allows you to see how the sausage was made. We should aim for higher transparency standards moving forward, but right now we need at least a minimum. So how can we change this? How can we make progress on this? Well, the good news is that virtually all academics at least agree 
that transparency, minimum transparency, should be an ethical duty that we obey or abide by. And this is from surveys and even a small Facebook poll that I ran. But the problem is that those same academics still believe that it's interpersonally inappropriate, even unethical, to actually enforce the ethical standard of minimum transparency. They think it's not their duty to ensure other researchers are abiding to such ethical principles. So, but of course, this is a very soft and weak position because you're saying, oh, yeah, I believe we should all be transparent and I'm going to do that in my own research, but I don't want to have to in enforce whether other people are meeting minimum transparency. But of course, if everyone thinks that, then everyone can still just get by with not actually meeting any minimum transparency. So to change this, I just propose the following new social norm. If you observe a researcher violating core ethical principles like minimum transparency or honesty with respect to cherry picking evidence, then it's your ethical duty to anonymously report such a person to a research integrity office. If unethical scientific behavior is observed, then it simply must be reported. It's really that simple. If ethical standards are not enforced, then it defeats the purpose of having them in the first place. Think about it. If the criminal code regarding property theft was not enforced, then the code is useless at protecting banks getting robbed. But I know some will say, oh, but it's not my job. It's stressful. It's inconvenient. Well, perhaps, but I'm sorry. If you're not willing to report unethical scientific behavior, then you're probably not fit to be a real scientist. Science simply cannot work as a collective cumulative enterprise if we're not all operating according to commonly held ethical principles like minimum transparency. Because if you think about it, uh, if you're not willing to enforce an ethical principle, then that probably means you don't actually care about it. Hence, if academics are not willing to enforce ethical principles like minimum transparency, then it means they don't actually care about that ethical principle. And if that's the case, the public who's paying the research uh, really needs to know about this. So I'll close with an apt quote by Edmund Burke, evil triumphs when good people do nothing. It's important that you, the taxpayer, engage with the videos to increase their visibility. So please like or dislike videos, leave a comment regarding points of clarification or other issues or topics you'd like us to cover. Leave comments pointing out any inaccuracies, mischaracterizations, errors. Finally, please consider making a donation so we can continue to create videos and achieve our goals of reforming research standards in academia. You can make a donation on our Patreon page, link to my left, or by making a one-time PayPal donation, link in the video description. Thank you.